Hi everybody, welcome back to uh, It's Your Life by the Grace of God. Um, I hope everybody had a great week this week. Um, as you know, we're following up with the uh, Proverbs 31 uh, series that I that I am that I started. Um, well, you know what? We're just gonna jump into it because there's a few things I I, I want to share with you about the next three verses because we're going every every three verses. So um, I wrote down. I think I remember saying that it would be best if you can get three different types of versions from three different uh, Bibles. Um, uh, the ones I was doing was from uh, the New King, King James Version, the NIV, and then the New Translation Version. Now, uh, I'm just going to read them to you because uh, this way I can start letting you know the differences in, in the words that, uh, that that they came out to me. And I said, okay, that was different from the last verse. So um, I didn't want to bring out all the books out. So I just wrote them down. And, uh, well, this is the one from the, the New King James uh, Version. It says, um, it starts at Proverbs 31, verse 13. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. Uh, verse 15. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. Now that was the uh, the King James version. Now the NIV, the New International Version, goes like this. Uh, it's almost uh, it's not that much of a difference. Okay, she she selects instead of seeks, it selects. She selects wool and flax and works with her with eager hands. Fourteen. She is like the merchant ship bringing food from afar that's still the same she gets up while it's still night and she provides food for her family and portions for her female servants the female instead of just her maid servants her maid servants servants almost the same okay so this the next one is the new living translation um she finds Again, that's seek, select, she finds. Those are the three, the three different different words. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant ship. She brings food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work. For her serving girls. Now, the new translation was the one that got to me because um, in the other ones, it talks about portions, especially when it comes to uh, verse 15. She she rises while it's still yet night, provides food for her household, the same way with the new international version. But in the New Translation, the New Living Translation, it doesn't speak about food at all, just breakfast for her household, which for me, is, it sounds like just her immediate family. And it doesn't say anything about feeding her maidservants. And it just talks about planning the day for them, uh, for the servant girls. So that one, I, you know, was like, got me a little bit like, well, why didn't it say that, you know? But, you know, like I said, you got to read differently. But I do like the idea that is said that she plans the day out for them, you know, because when it, who knows how big the household was? I mean, back in that day, who knows what what kind of living um, uh, conditions they were in or the living arrangements that they had? I mean, 
you know, I mean, if you ever watched the Ten Commandments, they had like tents, you know. So was it really like that? You know, they didn't have buildings and, you know, um, the mansions or whatever. They didn't have an up, upstairs, downstairs, like in Downton Abbey. So you kind of wonder how, you know, that how she planned the day out for them was. I mean, did they have a vineyard? Did they have a, a yard filled with vegetables, you know, right next to them where they had to, you know, uh, plant and and dig up vegetables and prepare them and so on for, for the family. And who knew, who knows how big the family was back then, you know? I mean, back then you had a big family. I mean, it wasn't just a few. You... Back in in those ages, as 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 I know, they had um, they had oh my how how could I put it? they had uncles and aunts and their their cousins and 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 so forth and son in laws and and daughter in laws and their families and I mean they had their whole tribe. In, in that one area, you know, wherever that area was, you know, it was all there. So it had to be big or, you know, the tent, they had to be a lot of tents, you know, and I'm pretty sure they weren't that far apart, but far, far apart enough that they had their privacy, I'm sure. You know, we don't know really how, how it was back then, but it was a lot of, um, a lot of relatives, that were, you know, together. And evidently the the family line grew and, and grew and grew because back then, remember the Lord said um, to multiply and that's what they did. So if they had sons and daughters, then those sons and daughters would have children and their children would have children, but they would all stick together. So who knows how you know, she did her her thing to to manage her part or her end of whatever, uh, how big her tent with was with with her immediate family, and plus she had to worry about the maid servants, and who knows if they had family, you know, and if they had children that she had help to take care of. So because I I figure like. In, in certain ages, I'm pretty sure they had uh, servants that it was almost like them getting paid, you know, to take care of their family. So they had like, let's say like in, you know, like in, in England days, you know, they would have butlers or whatever, but the butler had a family. So he would get paid to, you know, take care of his family, you know, but back then, who knows, you know, the same way, but who knows how that was worked out back back in the day so that that was pretty interesting to me and I was like okay so she and who knows how many servants servant maids uh she had okay so I don't even have one <laughs> jeez but <laughs> maybe that might change but anyway it was awesome to know that she had girls doing her her job you know most you know the little things that had to be done. I mean, I, you know, you, you talk about cleaning, washing, um, getting ready for the day, planting, plucking, um, making the food, serving. That, that's a lot. It entails a lot for a day. And, and for her to have to be up, as she said it from, you know, she would get up before the dawn uh, she in in the New King James version, she says um, in fifteen. Also, she also rises while it's still yet night, and in uh, the King uh, the NIV, where it says she wakes up. Blah blah blah. blah. Bringing while it's still night. Okay, it's the New uh, Living Translation. She gets up before dawn, which is apparently the same thing. You get up, you know, nighttime, but before it turns light. So it's still nighttime. And so she would probably get up like, I say, like, maybe, I don't know, 
6 o'clock, 6.30, back then it was probably like, who knows, you know, maybe for her it would be like 5 o'clock, 5.30, you know, back in the day, they didn't have time like, like that, but she would get up knowing that it was going to turn daylight soon, so she would get up still nighttime. But the one that really stood out to me was uh, 13, verse 13. Because that's, that's the first one. And I like it because she, it says she seeks wool and flax and and, is willing, and willingly works with her hands. And then in the NIV, it's eagerly works with her hands. And then in the new translation, she finds wool and flax and, and busily spins it. So I looked at what, what, what the word... Well, we all know what wool is, but what is flax? So I wasn't really sure what the, what was what, what is flax. So I found out that flax is um, a certain kind of material. I mean, well, wool you get that out of sheep, right? I mean, that's what they that's where mainly where they get wool from. When I looked it up. It said it, it's uh, flax is unspun fiber. Uh, textiles are made from flax. So usually what's made from flax are like bed sheets, linen, um, undergarments or underclothes, uh, table, you know, um, linen table stuff, you know, things like that. And she had a spinner or she spun it. And that's not easy because not like we have today. We have a lot of machines that that do that do that for us today. Back in the day, I don't. They didn't have that. She had to do it by hand. So you had a a lot of spinning, spinning. <laughs> a lot that that had to take hours because. There had to be a lot of material that she had to collect and then she had to work with. But I don't think it's too much different than what we do in our lives today. I mean, especially when it comes like to crafters, because us crafters, we like to go out and, and make things with our hands. And I, I, I don't know, but it's, it's just a good feeling when, when you can do something and you, and you say, oh, I made this with my hands. And uh, I guess that's how, you know, we all, we all start out as, you know, we, we toil, we get out there and, and we work and stuff. But she did it, I'm pretty sure, to make things for, you know, like we would do, like, you know, if you're into knitting or crocheting, you would, you would crochet, you know, um, a lace, to, uh, a, a cover for your table and it would look really pretty, you know. Or you would crochet um, blankets or, or, or knit blankets for your bed or, you know, for a cover for your sofa, things like that. Uh, and well, as for the men, I don't know, because for the men, they would probably, I don't know, maybe shear the, the sheep and bring the wool and she would just have to work with it. But I don't know where she would get the flax from. I don't, I don't know where she, where she got that from but again she probably had to go far to get it bring it back and work with it so i always found that awesome to be able to do something and be creative with your own hands and I, I, I just feel you get something out of it. I mean, even 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 if you're a guy, you, you I'm pretty sure you get you know it, it gets really a great feeling to know that you know you tinkered with a, a radio and um, you're trying to make it you know how to work. But you know you play around with all these little gadgets and things and you make it work and that's really awesome. Or putting together a bike or putting together a motorcycle and making it run, you know, it, it, you're using your hands to figure out how to do that. I mean, it could just, um, just like be like, you know, um, creating an automobile, you know, doing that. I mean, some guys are, are fantastic at, at being uh, mechanics, you know, and that's how come we have cars today. 
and uh, or you know washing machines and dishwashing machines because guys like to to get in, in a work, working with electrical things. You know, we also have wood crafters, and that's why we have, you know, these the beings, you know, on houses, and they have carvings because they love to carve things, you know. Back in the day, you would always see some some people with this little knife, and they're carving out, you know, uh, you know, pretty little heads on, on sticks or animals on, on sticks, and, you know, it's awesome. But the bottom line is that we, we as general... We like to work with our hands, and that's you know that's how we are. We like to work with our hands, and that, and to me that's a great feeling because I feel like you're being creative, and, and just like like our Father in Heaven, who was also a creator, and he created things. He created this earth, and he created everything under the heavens, you know, uh, on this earth. So. Because we are a part of him, that's why we have this creative side in us. Because we're just like our father. We like we like creating things just like him. And the possibilities are endless, are endless. So if you like working with your hands, you like making something and making something into something, do it. Don't stop. If you like doing it and it makes you happy, go for it. You can, you know, it just, it takes practice, you know, anything you want to get into, learn the gist of it, get into it and then, you know, and flip it and make it, make it your own, you know, and you'll be, you'll be surprised with the things that you come out with. Okay. Okay. So back, back to the, um, uh, where was I? to the scripture so i found that interesting about about the flax that that was you know something that that was a certain kind of material um as she brings food from afar i mean we all do that you know well you know we go to the market and stuff like that but back in the day she had to walk miles and miles and miles you know just to bring back you know certain certain foods or trade or barter you know whatever it was in that day so that that was also uh interesting uh for me uh to read that so yeah there was a lot of good things i got in here from from this from this verse, I guess um I started this little thing that I thought would be uh, helpful uh, for you and and it's helpful for me too. Um, I was you know researching and trying to figure out things how how I can continue to make these scriptures not only pop out for. For you but for for me as well so i ended up um getting a few things together and i know you know that people are into journaling right now and they're making all these fantastic little drawings and stuff and painting their pages and sticking little stickers and stuff like that on them so um, yeah I, I was doing the same thing too i started this like maybe uh, a few years ago this is the one i made it's been a while um it also has what do you call it? it? Has the earth, and it's going up to the to the heavens. I have little, you know, little pockets, little stickers in there that I still have to try to implement. I had gotten a little bag, so that, you know, I have index cards and it's just sticking in there. I also have a new one. This is my new one. I'm start. I just started, so it has nothing in there yet it's it's all blank but i saw this one girl she was doing it uh with a whole bunch of neat pictures and it's it's just i forgot what her name was anyway i'll, I'll bring it up next time so i got this one that i want to start and this is the first one i did when i started uh doing this one and what i put on here was a lot of flaps i have let me, let me close it up so you can see okay so it's like this and it has let me go backwards because what i have is i have the scripture okay i have the scripture right here i have the scripture and then i have a little tab here of what the scripture uh which scripture popped out for me uh within the three verses then i have here 
an observation, which was what I observed was with the word flax. And then, and then here, let me close it up. And then here I put down um, prayer and how I can, um, oh no, I missed one. This one was right here was supposed to be for um, application of how I can apply that to my daily living. And then it was prayer, which I still have to um, fill out. So I'm going to be doing that every, every, every three verses, you know, every week to see how, you know, how I can apply the scriptures into, um, into my life and, and so on. And so I hope you had a great week and I hope you, uh, will continue to, um, go along with me, uh, through, through the whole chapter of, uh, Proverbs 31. And if you have any comments or if you want to know anything or you want me to look something up for you, I'll be happy and willing to do that. Uh, I have to go. I have so many things going on that I'm trying to get done. Uh, but I'll talk to you more about that later. But for now, just have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.